continuing with a new class with finishing up assignment three. So I'm going to open up my folder. I'm going to open up my rough storyboard and it's good to have that. This may be the first thing you do today in class. Get that rough storyboard put into a post for the assignment, right? Because today is the deadline by 1159 tonight. The three things that are required to get full credit is your rough storyboard, your GIF animation as a GIF file, 8 by 8 inches at 100 pixels per inch, and a refined storyboard. I still need to finish my GIF animation and my refined storyboard. So I have my storyboard sketch. I'm going to open up two files right in Photoshop. First is my assets file. That's where I'm building my, my different frames and I have all these different potential layers to build with in groups. And then I'm also opening up right next to it my stage file. It's the same size, but what it has are the finished frames. I have 18 frames so far to tell the story I tell here with nine keyframes. And this is where I left off in the last video. Get off the crop tool. So the mosquito moves, he chomps it, starts to glow, and then the, the world starts to fracture. Now, honestly, this meets all the requirements of the assignment. How is that true? Well, does it showcase a transformation? Yes. What's that transformation? That glowing is the obvious transformation, right? Everything else is just kind of a movement test, but then that glowing transforms, changes state. Does it use something I've already created in the class as some part of it? Yes, it uses my creature design, it uses my landscape design, I did add new things like the mosquito, right? And some of the brush effects. But you can add as much as you want as long as you're using at some level something you've already created. Okay, now that that animation's kind of working, I need to select all of these frames by holding down shift and going from end to end so they're all highlighted in gray and then drag them down to the trash. And then save, command S, because Anytime you add a layer or edit a layer, you need to have all of your frames deleted. Not deleted, trashed. <laughs> delete would be bad. If you hit delete, then it would delete the layer, right? What would happen if you didn't? And if I added my next frame in? Well, it would add that frame to every animation frame. So it wouldn't look like it's animated, animated anymore. So it's just, you only do that at the end. Okay. Now, this was the last frame I ended up with. That's the last frame I had set up. In fact, I still have it as a combined frame here, so I need to delete that. And now I need to set up my next frame. So this is like using tracing paper, onion skinning as an animator, going between my assets and this, what's next? So what do I wanna do? Well, I follow my storyboard, what happens? The glow doesn't reverse itself. Instead, the glow gets so strong that the background starts to crack apart. So if anything, I'm going to take my creature element, which is here in orange, and I'm going to up these effects. So I'm going to start with inner glow. It's already at 80% opacity. I'm going to take it to 100% opacity. And then size, it's already at almost all the way. I might as well push it to all the way. Okay, color overlay, it's at 69%. I'm going to push that, let's go to 85, or 83, and then outer glow, I'm going to push that up into the 90s, and then use its spread, and maybe change its color, because that yellow now, I want it to be a little bit closer to white, so I'm going to do halfway between that yellow and the white. So now it's going you know, full bright. So from that to that, can I get even brighter? I can. I can do the color overlay and take it to about 90%. Very strong. I can even add a drop shadow. This is a nice kind of trick. You usually think of drop shadows as being dark, but you can set the drop shadow to be a light color and then actually to make it normal so that it brightens even more. It's like 
And what's nice about the drop shadow is it's more directional. And I can increase that size. So this gives me even more, more tools to play with. Okay, now is that, does that seem like a nice enough jump up from that? I think so, in terms of the creature glow. Now, I get to use my move tool and I get to play with breaking apart the background a little bit more. So I can transform it, I can tilt it. It's a little hard to keep track of all these these sections, but I kind of like these little fissures that come on. And remember that outline is just coming from a layer style that I'm going to leave turned on from when I cut these out. And it's going to start shifting these, sometimes violently, you know, big movements now, because I've already started it. From here to here, I've started breaking them apart. Now they're really going to start to to rumble. I won't do the Vince McMahon thing, but that's what I'm thinking. I can also grow them. But to make it look like an earthquake kind of thing, I want them to go in different directions. If I rotate them, I don't want to rotate them all the same. I want to vary them. Where are my others? Oh, my others are going to be in front. Now, like I said, these aspects of your animation are all going to be different for each of you, like how you want to showcase this transformation. What I'm doing now is instead of something subtle like the glow of the creature being the transformation, which I just did with a single layer style that I upped and upped over multiple frames, now I'm doing a pretty disruptive, very noticeable transformation of the setting itself, kind of fracturing it and making it fall apart. And I'm trying not to get too obsessed about how it looks. So there's going to be little weird things that happen, and I have to be fine with that. Because this is all going to go by in a fraction of a second. And it's all going to get reduced to just 256 pixel colors anyway. And then here's the big one. It trimbles. I'm going to grow it a little bit just to kind of cover its trembling. All right, so now this is my next frame. So just a quick review. We were doing it a ton last class. How do I move my assets? to my stage, I go to my topmost visible layer, and I'm going to amend the directions just a little bit, though of course what I what we did in Photoshop last class, that worked throughout, but I'm going to amend them so that they're the exact same as in Photo P. <laughs> so it's just a little extra, but not much. So I'm going to use the Photo P steps right now. So I'm going to select the topmost visible layer, then I'm going to scroll down to the base layer and hold down shift so it will select every layer from my topmost visible down right then i'm going to go hold down option and go to layer and instead of saying merge visible i'm going to hold down option and say merge layers it will do the exact same thing that we were doing before but because photo p the freeware version of photoshop that you can use at home without having an adobe license on a browser because it does not have a merge visible option, this is the way you do it. You have to select every layer underneath your top visible layer, even the layers that are turned off, and then you hold down option and say layer merge layers. That gives you a merged layer at the top. Command A to select it all, Command C to copy it all, go to your stage, Command V to paste it in. And there we have our next movement, right? It's like things are exploding, like a bomb's hitting kind of down and out, boom, boom, right? Squash and squish doesn't really apply to rock, but you can still have like the impact kind of fall and rise, right? You get kind of that big effect. So I'm going to hit Command D in my assets to deselect, delete that merged layer, and now I do it all over again. 
So I go to the effects on my creature, and at this point, just color overlay, full 100%, and then drop shadow, increase that size. We're going supernova here, don't want to be subtle. Outer glow, full opacity, full size. It's like an incandescent bulb, right? And then inner glow doesn't really matter anymore because it's all filled with white anyway. All right. Is that a big enough change? Yes, quite a bit. Now the backgrounds start at the base, transform it. And now you don't even really see them, right? Because there's so much white. So I'm just going to jiggle them and push them off. Just crumbling pieces. Maybe grow them a little bit more. So they're kind of exploding outward. Push them up. And it only takes time because there's multiple assets to each adjust. And you notice I'm not duplicating them at this point because this is chaotic, right? So if I want to recreate an in-between or something later, I can do that. But now I'm kind of working towards the end game. It would be best if I duplicated them, turned them on and off. But now I know kind of what I'm looking for. I don't need to be so careful because I'm confident I can recreate it should I need to. This is going to fall away. This is going to, let's just have it slope down and fall like that. This one is going to open up those kind of cracks. Feel like I missed this one. This is going to really sink down. And then the big guy. And it's going to start to tilt it out like this. Big shift. So now the problem is I have all these moved pieces, but now they're moved so much that they're revealing the others in front. So what do I start to do? I start to turn off that one. So from this big change to this, right? And what do I do? Topmost visible layer. Hold down shift, scroll down to my base layer, click it, selects every layer, right? Even the ones turned off. That's why groups are helpful, so you don't have to scroll through hundreds of layers. Then hold down option, say layer merge layers. We'll give you a combined merge layer at the top. I like it because it actually calls it a merged layer when you do it that way. And then command A, command C, command V on your stage to paste it in. So now I'm just working to setting it to reset, to getting to kind of a blank slate. So now, because explosions accelerate, you know, exponential growth, right? Especially chain reaction explosions. When I say go nuclear, so that's kind of what I'm talking about. So deselect, delete. So now I don't need to, to do a whole lot more, but I'll do one more step. <laughs> but basically I could just make this whole thing bright white. And that would make sense in terms of the animation. But I'll just go one more. I'll take these effects. And I'm going to, let's see, go to my outer glow. Push its size all the way up. Push its opacity all the way up. Push its spread a little bit bigger. So it's right to the edges, right? <clears throat> then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that layer and I'm going to push that on top 
<clears throat> of those foreground elements. So now that glow, that impact blast is affecting everything around.